Hi and welcome to Tengi Reviews The Twilight Zone. I'm Tengi and today's episode is Perchance to Dream. Perchance to Dream was written by Charles Beaumont and directed by Robert Florey. The plot, Edward Hall is on the verge of collapse when he seeks help from a psychiatrist. Completely exhausted, possibly mentally unwell, he's a man with a heart condition who is afraid to sleep because in recurring nightmares a strange woman named Maya is trying to scare him to death. Edward is convinced the dreams and the risk to his life are real, but can he tell reality from fantasy? And what will happen if he falls asleep again? Points of interest. This is the first episode written by someone other than Rod Serling. Sensational opening shot of the skyscraper. It's so cinematic. Really great editing and photography here, especially the dizzying revolving door shots. Once again, like the Twilight Zone precursor, the time element, this story features a man seeing a psychiatrist about dreams that seem too real, and the idea of dying in your dreams being a real death. Both present dreams as a kind of other world no less real than our own and just as dangerous. The writing in this episode does have a different feel. It's still very much in keeping with the Twilight Zone style, but it's interesting to note the different flavour Beaumont brings to this. Edward Hall is supposed to be 35 in this story. Now, this is a recurring thing with me. Have you noticed how much older people look for their age in films and TV shows of this era? I guess in this instance it works because he's supposed to be exhausted and unwell, but I suspect this is an issue we will return to as the series goes on. Now, interesting side note. Edward refers to a case where a woman was killed by a psychopath hiding in the backseat of her car. This is a bit of folklore we've all heard, but I was curious if it was actually referring to a real crime. Wikipedia tells me the first recorded evidence of this story as urban legend turns up in 1968, and there is a suggestion that this Twilight Zone episode might be where the whole idea originated from. This has to be one of the most beautifully photographed Twilight Zone episodes we've seen so far. The imagery throughout is stunning. The dream sequences in the amusement park are genuinely nightmarish. This did remind me a bit of the film Carnival of Souls. Now, Robert Florey is notable for bringing the style of German Expressionism to his film Murders in the Rue Morgue. And he brings the same sensibility to this episode. Look at this shot from the carnival. It could be straight out of the cabinet of Dr. Caligari. Remarkable stuff and something I really did not expect to see in the Twilight Zone. And the recurring theme of scary monkeys in the amusement park. It does seem almost like a nod to Rue Morgue as well. I love the way Flory juxtaposes this wild expressionistic style with the streamlined modern look of the psychiatrist's office. There's such a low-key realism in those scenes. It's a really great way to distinguish the real world of the story from the dream world. The back screen projection shots with the roller coaster are so well done. This is not something you get to say about back screen projection every day. It's really hard to do it as well as it's done here. Richard Conti plays Edward as very breathless and the way he keeps clutching his chest clutching his heart with the backstory about his heart condition, it just adds so much tension to the story. It has been suggested that this episode might have given some inspiration for the Nightmare on Elm Street films, as it does feature similar themes of being murdered in your dreams. The cast and crew. Robert Florey is a significant name in the world of horror films. He directed the wonderful Murders in the Rue Morgue and was slated to direct the Universal Frankenstein with Bela Lugosi as the monster until plans were changed. He also directed the first Marx Brothers movie, The Coconuts, and two other Twilight Zone episodes. Writer Charles Beaumont, along with Richard Matheson, emerged as one of the great writers of Twilight Zone alongside Rod Serling. His writing credits are just too long and interesting to do justice to here, but do look up his work on the internet. An amazing work, a prolific talent, tragically cut short by an early death at the age of only 38. 
Richard Conti appeared in over a hundred films and lots of TV, but is perhaps best remembered today for his role in The Godfather. John Larch would be no stranger to The Twilight Zone, going on to appear in two other episodes, perhaps most memorably as Anthony Fremont's father in It's a Good Life. He appeared in many high-profile movies, including Dirty Harry and Play Misty for Me. Suzanne Lloyd appeared in numerous TV shows, both in the US and UK, including The Avengers and The Saint. To sum up, I found this really intriguing and a very different episode of Twilight Zone. The introduction of a new writer does give the series a different feel. It's like a slight change of gears, but it does still sit very well under the Twilight Zone umbrella. I like the unanswered questions this story leaves us with. Who is Maya in Edward's dreams? Why does she want to kill him? Is she symbolic of his own heart condition that is waiting at any moment to strike him down? Is she death itself? The story really has the look and feel of a movie and I think that is all down to Robert Florey and cinematographer George T. Clemens. I love the cinematic influences this brings in too, especially to German horror cinema. The nightmarish world of Dr. Caligari is the perfect reference point for this nightmarish kind of a world too. Richard Conti gives a superb and intense performance here. He's literally breathless throughout and he adds so much to the suspense and gravitas of this story. Likewise, John Larch's low-key naturalism anchors this story firmly in a believable reality for the viewer. If you have thoughts on Perchance to Dream, I would love to hear about them in the comment section. If you've enjoyed this video and would like to support this channel, I would love it if you would click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for joining me today. I hope to see you next time for Judgment Night. I'm looking forward to seeing you then. Bye.